What happens when an aircraft fuselage is breached or a window on a spacecraft breaks? Everyone and everything is sucked out, right? Well... You've seen it so many times that it's a cliche. When a spacecraft or an aircraft is breached, everything and everyone is sucked out until the hole or breach is sealed. But what is actually doing the sucking here? Is it space or the Earth's atmosphere? Well, nothing in the universe actually sucks, not through straws or through vacuum cleaners. Everything in the universe is pushed. What we call sucking is usually just fluid moving from an area of higher pressure to an area of lower pressure. When you use a straw, for example, you first make your lungs bigger, which increases the volume of your lungs and therefore decreases the pressure inside your lungs and mouth. Fluids like air naturally flow down these pressure gradients or from high to low pressure. So when you increase the volume of your lungs, suddenly you have the same number of air molecules in your lungs, but trying to press on a larger space, which decreases the pressure in your mouth and lungs, which is in contrast less than the pressure of the outside atmosphere via air molecules and such. So the fluid or the air in the atmosphere is suddenly higher, so it moves from high to low pressure into your mouth, into your lungs, and taking up any objects or things that aren't too big or too heavy along with this gradient flow, and that's usually oxygen into your lungs that you breathe so you don't die. It's actually kind of epic. When you use a straw, it's actually the weight of all the world's air pushing liquid into your mouth. Okay, so there's no sucking in science, but still, could you be pushed out of a spacecraft hole or worse? Could this absolutely gruesome death from alien resurrection happen? Oh, oh, turn it off. The amount of push that a fluid can produce in this kind of situation is the pressure differential between two interfaces, in this case, a spacecraft interior and space. Space itself is a vacuum, meaning that it has a pressure of zero pounds per square inch, effectively. And in the spacecraft, at least the ones that we use, they are pressurized to atmospheric pressure, or the pressure on Earth's surface, which is 15 pounds per square inch. I don't know why I capitalized these and not that. You get it. Because of this relatively small pressure differential, you're never gonna be pushed out of a spacecraft hole and into space as like some kind of like, like gut pastry cream thing. I mean, the hole in Alien Resurrection wasn't even that big. Let's say maybe it was half a square inch. Now imagine putting your hand up to a hole like this that leads to space and have someone push on the back of your hand with maybe seven or eight pounds. Can you imagine that your whole hand and your body gets forced through that hole? Nah. That doesn't mean this terrible death couldn't happen, though. To make a pressure differential really dangerous like we see in the movie, we have to increase the pressure of one side of this equation, and you can do so with a heavier fluid, like water. Take what happens to this poor, poor crab on the bottom of the ocean when it encounters a massive pressure differential at the bottom of the sea with a pipe. Now you see it crawl over this pipe and then it gets pushed into the hole. <laughs> oh God, it gets pushed into the hole exactly like you see in Alien Resurrection. And it only does this because the pressure differential is so enormous. If this is on the bottom of the sea floor and the hole's not too big, the crab might be instantaneously facing pressures like having 3,000 pounds put on your body all at once, instantaneously, and whatever makes its body and its carapace just obviously cannot stand up to that kind of pressure. Oh. Oh, poor Krabby. So unless a spacecraft was pressurized like the ocean floor, we would not get pushed out of a hole if it was created, and that also means that we wouldn't be sucked across the room. There is a caveat to this conclusion, however. If the hole is small enough or the pressure differential great enough, in the area right by the breach, the flow of fluid can reach supersonic speeds. 
The Mythbusters actually found this out firsthand when they blew open a pressurized airplane cabin. Though some pieces were pushed out by this flow right near where the breach was, if you're only a few feet away, you're not experiencing any pushing whatsoever. So you're not gonna be sucked across a room if a spacecraft blows. You probably should worry more about not being able to breathe and freeze and your eyeballs freezing. Surprise, surprise, Hollywood physics were off again and you won't get pushed through a hole and into space like, <laughs> like death butter. But to get serious for a second, pressure differentials can be a huge danger, especially to divers who service dams or divers back in the day that used diving suits. There have been incidents where diving, pressurized diving suits have failed and, they've, and, and the divers have been pushed up, their bodies have been physically crushed and pushed up into their own helmets and so it's always good to know when you're under pressure oh because science oh Want more science? Go check out my last video on how the Men in Black's rocket car works. Subscribe to Nerdist for more videos. If you want Because Science two days earlier than anyone else, head to Vessel at Vessel.com slash Nerdist. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, you can hit me up in the comment section below. Thanks. Oh, and there's, there's one really weird thing about being thrown out into space. Uh, if, because of pressure differentials, if you were thrown out into space, what, what would your first reaction be? It'd probably be to, all right, I'm going into space. I've got to hold my breath for as long as possible. But because of pressure differentials, if you were thrown out into space, the air in your lungs would suddenly be at a very high pressure compared to the vacuum of space. So when you do that and you, you suck in air and, and you're thrown out into space, the air itself would actually force itself out of your lungs and so quickly that it would drop in temperature and freeze your lungs and your trachea and your mouth and your teeth and it, it, this freezing blast of air. And it's like this, this death exhale of frost and doom. And then, uh, then you lose consciousness because you can't breathe. And we know this happens and then you have a seizure. And we know this happens because uh, we've put like chimpanzees and dogs in full vacuums, not in space, but here on Earth, a vacuum chamber and then we put a dog and a chimpanzee in there and uh, we know it happens because of them. <laughs>